Good afternoon. I am Sherry Trimble, museum educator at the State Museum of Pennsylvania. I want to remind everybody this session is being recorded early next week. Our plan is to send the recording out to the email you supplied during sign up. We'll be using the question and answer feature at the bottom of your screen for any questions. At the end of the program, there will be a question and answer period. Please feel free to add your questions throughout the whole program and we'll get to those at the end. In the chat box, I'll be adding the PHMC's etiquette and policies and some other important links. And now I would like to turn it over to our museum director, Beth Hager. Thanks so much, Sherry. Good afternoon and thank you all for joining us today for our weekly Learn at Lunchtime series that the State Museum launched online this month. Normally this weekend, we would be welcoming you to Charter Day at the museum in cooperation with the Pennsylvania State Archives. Both the State Museum and the State Archives are bureaus of the Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission, known as PHMC, the Commonwealth's Official History Agency. But since we remain closed to the public for now, PHMC is presenting Charter Day online with a virtual Charter Day landing page with links to a variety of special programming to mark Pennsylvania's 340th birthday. Included will be a virtual display of William Penn's 1681 original charter, which is kept and maintained by the State Archives. We won't be lined up to see it on its annual limited display at the State Museum, uh, this weekend, but please follow our social media for the link to this landing page, which is slated to go live this Sunday. We're particularly pleased to bring you today's Artist Conversations program because it so well connects to William Penn. State Museum Fine Art Curator Amy Hammond will be interviewing historian Jason Wilson of the Capital Preservation Committee about the William Penn mural series by artist Violet Oakley that's in the governor's reception room at the Capitol. The recording of today's program will be featured on that virtual landing page I was just mentioning that PHMC is doing uh, for Charter Day. That'll be the State Museum's contribution. But I will uh, start by thanking Amy for her uh, Artist Conversation series for Learn at Lunchtime and welcome her as she uh, talks with Jason. Uh, Amy, Violet Oakley means a lot to the State Museum with our vast collection of her drawings for the State Capitol. We had that great exhibition last year uh, that you co-curated um, on Violet Oakley's Senate murals. So it's exciting today to hear about the governor's reception room. So thank you and uh, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you Beth for that introduction. The messages Violet Oakley conveys in her Capitol murals are as relevant today as they were at the unveiling 115 years ago. Our guest speaker has an extensive knowledge of the murals and he will bring this unique Pennsylvania story to light. Jason Wilson is the historian with the Capital Preservation Committee, which was formed in 1982 with the task of restoring and preserving the Capitol and Capitol Complex's historic and artistic integrity. Jason has served on the committee staff for 15 years, and his duties include designing exhibits, inventory, in-depth tours, research and writing of committee publications, including two books, A Sacred Challenge, which is about Violet Oakley's work, and Literature in Stone, The Hundred-Year History of Pennsylvania State Capitol. We will be putting Jason's full bio in the chat box with the link for the Capital Preservation Committee. And thank you, Jason, for joining us. Hi, Amy. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. I wanted to begin by asking um, that uh, question about Violet Oakley's commission. So this was the first of Violet Oakley's commissions at the Capitol. And how did she get this, this important job? Well, she was trained primarily um, before all of this as, as an illustrator. So she had studied with Howard Pyle and Cecilia Bow uh, at, at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. But her, her first foray really into mural painting was, was at a place called All Angels Church uh, in New York City. Uh, and that commission was completed in 1898. Uh, and from there, Joseph Houston, you know, the Philadelphia, New York, uh, art community was 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 well connected then so Houston uh, when that's the architect for our, our main capital building um, he wanted to incorporate as much Pennsylvania artists as he could uh, into the building so he found out about this commission at all angels 
Um, and he contacted a, a, a fellow Princetonian uh, graduate uh, of his uh, named John Irwin Bright, uh, and they surveyed the murals. And from that, um, in 1901, when he received the Capitol Commission, uh, he wanted to um, give a uh, one of one of the principal chambers to a female artist from Pennsylvania. And he, uh, because of the success of the All Angels murals, he chose Oakley. What an important platform for her. And uh, once she received the commission, how did she develop her theme? She initially, let's see, she got the commission uh, or was notified of the commission in July of 1902. So from there, um, beginning in 1903, uh, she traveled to Italy uh, to, to kind of observe uh, some, some mural paintings um, in Rome, Florence. I think she went to Siena and Venice as well. Uh, and then from there, she went <clears throat> straight to England because she wanted to, to do research on William Penn's life. Um, and um, really the, the, the theme, I think she started out probably not thinking about incorporating Penn, but she also knew that Edwin Austin Abbey uh, was gonna be decorating some of the other principal chambers. Um, they really wanted her initially to focus on other aspects of the history of the, the Commonwealth. But once she got into, into researching Penn, she, she really became enamored, I think, with his, his legacy and the, the idea of, um, you know, his religious freedom, uh, freedom from persecution of, 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 for all believers. Uh, and that, that's really triggered her to um, go back to Joseph Houston and the Capitol Building Commission and say, this is what I want to do on, on these walls. And uh, Houston really, um, you know, he went to bat for her, her and, uh, and, and actually put forward this idea of, of Penn's legacy um, to, to be to be put on the on the walls of the reception room. And once she had her ideas aligned, uh, where did she paint the murals, and uh, how did they get? How well here is an image of the governor's reception room. So how did she get them uh, installed in the room? Yeah, the, the murals were painted. Uh, obviously, she didn't paint them on site. She she uh, the majority of the mural work was done actually at the Red Rose Studio, which is in Villanova. Um, she lived there with um, several other female artists, um, Jesse Wilcox Smith, Elizabeth Shippen Green Elliott, uh, Henrietta Cousins. So they lived in this um, kind of colony of, of artists there, and that's where these were painted. Um, she developed, you know, she developed her sketches, and then from there, then enlarged to studies, and then the studies would be full size murals to fit the, the niches up above the. Uh, the freeze in the in the reception room so they were painted there um they were sent here actually the the interesting thing to note these are the first pieces of art actually first uh fine arts really to be installed in the in the in the capitol building uh and these were installed in november of 1906 so they would have been shipped by train and then she traveled up here to supervise the the installers which um these were like i said the, i think the day after thanksgiving uh in November of 1906 is when the, the murals were installed. It must have been quite a process. I, I would guess. She was, she was very um, particular about being there to supervise the, uh, the, the workmen who did the, uh, did the work, make sure the freezes and the surrounds uh, were, uh, were correct. And she actually had to come back up um, from Philadelphia after they were installed to do a little bit of uh, facing touch up down around the, the bottom where the freezes didn't quite cover the canvas. So. Okay. And uh, why don't we take a look at uh, the first mural? And uh, it's interesting, uh, you know, Violet Oakley was uh, tasked with, uh, you know, addressing Pennsylvania's history. And why did she begin William Penn's story in 1525 at a printer shop in Cologne? Uh, well, I think, I think what you have to understand, I think what, what she wanted to show first was, you know, the, the persecution at, at the hands or changing um, royalty of the, the Protestant Catholic uh, rulers of England. So she had to show murals of intolerance so she could get to, to why Penn's uh, ideas of tolerance and, and the establishment of Pennsylvania were, were significant. So, you know, William Tyndale, the first translation of the Bible, uh, that was highly controversial. You know, you, you didn't need, an, you didn't necessarily, I mean, it, it helped obviously, but you, you know, now lay folks could read the Bible in English instead of having to have uh, it translated from Latin. Uh, Anna Skew, um, moving on, where, where you look at the, you know, the burning of the books, Oxford here, Tyndale was executed for that. Uh, as, as you move along, um, the, the, the granting of the, the translation was, was done uh, in 1537, but then Anne Askew, 
um, was also persecuted for her beliefs. So she wanted to show all of these, um, you know, the, the intolerance before the, and the culmination of the, the English Civil War as well, um, before she got to the, uh, the other ideas of William Penn. And, And uh, we meet William Penn in mural six. And uh, would you mind telling us how his biography shaped the founding of Pennsylvania? Sure. Um, you know, William Penn was. Uh, I, I think. I think it's best to start. You know, his his father was an admiral, uh, a fairly significant admiral in the Eng the English Navy. Um, so he came from a, a military family uh, that that had you know duty and loyalty and fidelity to the crown first, um, and that just wasn't. That really wasn't in the cards as Penn became a teenager, uh, 16, 17. He, he served on his father's ship for, for a while, uh, but, you know, a military, a military life wasn't going to be for him, which really, um, you know, frankly upset Sir Admiral William Penn uh, initially. Later on, they came, um, you know, their, their loggerheads uh, kind, of, kind of went away. They, they at first didn't, didn't agree on that. Um, and, um, you know, Penn listen to the, uh, as it says, it says here, Penn, Penn meets the Quaker, I think Thomas Lowe was his name, uh, preaching in a field in, in Ireland. Uh, and he, he became interested, he was like, that, that made sense to him, uh, was the, the Quaker ideology and that the, you know, it shouldn't be this, this back and forth and the persecution between the uh, Catholic, Protestant, Angli Anglican uh, Church of England. Um, so after, um, years of that, his father finally, before he passed away in 1770, um, this, this is obviously 1667, denouncing his son, but uh, three years later, he, you know, Admiral Penn uh, and, and William, uh, his son, kind of reconciled, and, uh, and, and the, you know, he, uh, the Admiral, I think, understood um, that he had to be, um, he had to follow his conscience, you know, that, that, that in founding the uh, the colony uh, of Pennsylvania. So, this this is a an image of Penn's examination in the uh, Tower of London. And uh, Sherry, would you mind uh, moving forward through the next few till we get to the charter? And uh, we are currently celebrating Charter Day here in Pennsylvania, as Beth mentioned. And I wanted to take a moment to recognize uh, this significant moment in history. Would you mind telling us about the narrative in this mural? Yeah, the, the narrative, uh, we, we moved, uh, I should have, should have mentioned those, the, the two murals before obviously are, are Penn being imprisoned um, for his, his Quaker beliefs. So he's, uh, and he was imprisoned several times, but wrote several significant um, treatises on um, freedom of religion prior to that. Um, the, the charter for Pennsylvania is significant because it, it basically, it started, it, uh, there was a debt owed um, to Admiral Penn, uh, something in the neighborhood of 16,000 pounds, I believe it was, which uh, is, is not a small sum back in the 1660s, 1670s. I think it equates to something in the neighborhood of uh, around 3 million pounds today. So there was a debt owed um, to the Admiral, which Penn then um, assumed upon his father's um, passing. And this debt was paid off by land in the, in, uh, and, and a colonial charter in the New World. Uh, and, and Penn's goal was to, to found a, a state of uh, um, religious uh, freedom, a uh, state of liberty spiritual, uh, which is what Violet Oakley titled her entire freeze. Um, and so the, the granting of the charter uh, was both to uh, satisfy the debt that was owed, but also to give um, the Quakers in England and, and elsewhere. Penn, Penn published um, significant uh, writings in, uh, in the Netherlands and in Germany to, to seek other Quakers and not, not just Quakers, anyone that believed uh, in, a, in, a, um, in a higher power was free to come and worship as they wanted to in Pennsylvania. And that's the real significance of the, of the charter, uh, which was signed on March 4th of 1681 and why we, why we celebrate it. Because it really was the first um, attempt at, at granting religious freedom uh, kind of across the board. It's a very important message. And as we're coming to uh, mural 13, the last mural in the series, uh, this is uh, 
titled Penn's First Sight of the Shores of Pennsylvania. And why do you think that Violet Oakley stopped here? Yeah, I think that's probably my favorite mural in, in the series. And I think that's been, been probably reproduced uh, the most of them. And it's just, it's kind of his gaze as the, you know, nothing in the, in the entire freeze takes place in Pennsylvania. It's all the, the precursor to the founding of it. And he's, he's arriving and just kind of his gaze is, is you know, just looking forward, you know, it, it just, it ends with uh, big expectations and, and excitement. And I think that's, that's really what the, what the message of the mural is meant to convey. That's very well said, expectations and excitement. And uh, how did the, the politicians and the public receive the murals at the unveiling? The, um, the public and the politicians, the Capitol Building Commission, Joseph Houston, um, Governor Samuel Pennypacker, they all were uh, overwhelmed uh, and more than pleased. In fact, they all wrote Oakley letters of congratulations. As it was being, as the first five murals, which we mentioned, um, show the, the persecution at the hands of both the Anglican and the Catholic Church and, and back and back and forth uh, between Protestant and, and Catholic rulers, the, uh, um, let's see, the, uh, the um, American Catholic Historical Society uh, was not very pleased with how Catholics were per portrayed um, in terms of persecuting uh, English martyrs in those first murals, and they um, they were pretty adamant that they didn't want those to go um, on the wall. And uh, it was actually Governor Samuel Pennypacker at the time that really defended Oakley in the press and, and made telephone calls and said, you know, this is, this is her historical vision. Um, she's not trying to single anyone out. And uh, eventually the, um, the, the public Board of Public Grounds as well as the Building Commission kind of uh, said, you know, the, these are what she wants in, in, the, in the freeze and that's what's going to going to go on here. So after that, I think that the controversy kind of kind of died down um, and, and she was able to put the put the murals uh, in, in. I think that's what's so fascinating about this series is that it's William Penn's 17th century story through the eyes of Violet Oakley as a 20th century pioneer woman artist. And uh, why do you think William Penn's story was so interesting to Violet Oakley? Well, as I said, I don't, I don't know that when she first set out to do the research that she thought she was going to put a freeze of just William Penn's life. I think once she did the research at Oxford uh, and did a lot of reading on William Penn, that she kind of felt a connection. Um, Violet Oakley was a Christian scientist all of her life. Um, William Penn was a Quaker. I'm not going to say that the persecution was, was the same um, to them, but as a as a believer in a religion that may be seen to be somewhat on the periphery of what would be considered mainstream Protestant or Catholic, I think that she felt felt a deep connection uh, to Penn for that, uh, and just her her Christian Science beliefs and, and Quakerism seemed to meld really well, and I think she wanted to show that uh, in the murals as well. And uh, how does the Capital Preservation Committee manage the care of such a large body of work? Right. Well, these um, all of Oakley's murals were conserved, um, at least in this chamber, in 1991 and 92. Uh, and she she by far has the largest body of work in the Capitol. We have other artists, Edwin Austin Abbey, uh, George Gray Bernard, um, Roland Hinton Perry, uh, William Brantley Van Ingen. Um, but she has the largest number, and and it's in the this room, the Senate, and the Supreme Court. Uh, so we have a cyclical maintenance program that if, if there is damage to the murals, we're able to um, address that on a, on a yearly or uh, every, every few year basis. Um, and so they were, the fine arts in the building were, were initially all conserved um, very early on. And now we can, um, we can maintain those if there's ever damage or anything that needs to be done, we can, uh, we can address that. Um, as needed through a trust fund that was set up uh, some 37 years ago. So it's a very big job. It is. <laughs> and I think it is time for our question and answer. All right. Yeah. So, how question and answer is going to work is we are going to use the question and answer button at the bottom, which we already have a handful of questions coming in. So, um, First question is going to be, um, this is, uh, they have seen the Violet Oakley murals in the Fleischer Memorial at the Church of England complex in Philadelphia, and it's now the Arts Center. Uh, do you know anything about that? 
Uh, it's been a while since I, I do remember the Fleischer Art Memorial. Um, off the top of my head, I'm going to say that I don't, <laughs> I don't feel comfortable. I know that she did a, an amazing number of, of um, compositions and artwork uh, throughout Philadelphia um, and New York City, uh, but I, I really don't, um, off the top of my head, feel comfortable commenting on the, on the, on the Fleischer Art Memorial. Uh, Uh, we have an, a question here about her theme, and uh, she wasn't necessarily assigned William Penn, was she? Or would you mind uh, speaking a little bit about her, the difference between what she was asked to do and what she actually completed? She was, they, they didn't assign or give any of the capital artists, uh, you know, they didn't dictate what they were going to do. Uh, they gave, I think Governor Penny Packer developed a list of about 30 topics in Pennsylvania history that they could choose from if they wanted to. And um, so she really, she went ahead and, um, you know, her, her, her theme was her own development. And then she kind of sold it to Joseph Houston, who, who said, okay, that seems, seems correct. I mean, it was, it, you know, the, the room is done in Tudor style. So English, uh, quarter saw and oak, um, just, you know, English motifs and ideas weren't out of place for the room. So, um, but no, she wasn't, she wasn't assigned that. That's, that's what she came up with. And she really um, put it forth towards the board who, who agreed with her then. And uh, we have a question here about the mural with uh, Admiral Penn and his son. And uh, is that, is that dog a Great Dane? Yes, it is a Great Dane, which I believe is, is one of the, if not the, the official dog or mascot of, of England um, is one of them. So I think that's why it's represented. Um, I've read elsewhere where it said, you know, the, the dog is there kind of, he's be, he's dejected, uh, the, his dad's yelling at him and throws him out of his home and the dog is there kind of sniffing his hand in, in, a, in a kind of act of support, you know, showing, showing its compassion. So I think that's what the Great Dane represents in that mural. And uh, what was Violet Oakley paid for the commission? She was paid $20,000 over the course of the commission in installments of $5,000. So she, when she signed the contract, she got five to begin work. And as the work progressed, uh, she got 5,000, I think, you know, halfway through another 5,000 towards the end and then 5,000 upon completion. And uh, is there a collection of archives and photos for her time at the Red Rose Inn? There is her work is her uh, aside from the the studies and items that went to uh, the state museum her work is kind of spread out the majority there's a lot of photographs down at the archives of American art uh, with the Smithsonian in Washington um, uh, see the uh, the uh, I'm trying to think um, where else there were several Philadelphia the Philadelphia Museum of Art would have some of her works uh, photographs related to Red Rose uh, as well as the um, Cogsley, her home um, in uh, in Philadelphia, would have pictures of the Red Rose time. And I'll, I'll add to just a small plug that the State Museum does have uh, a collection of her murals from the Capitol as well. Or her, I'm sorry, we have a collection of the studies of the murals from the Capitol. And uh, we have a specific question here about the 13th mural when William Penn arrives, uh, when he's looking at Pennsylvania shores. And uh, the question is, uh, is it portraying William Penn on a river since Pennsylvania does not have a coastline? Yeah, I think it's, it's William Penn arriving, you know, either in the Delaware Bay or the Delaware River. So he came, he, the, the ship welcome came up the Delaware. Um, and so that's, I'm not sure whether it's in the, in the bay or in the, in the river. And, uh, okay. Do, uh, does Violet Oakley have any stained glass at work at the Capitol? No, not at the Capitol. She did, she did a, a dome at the uh, Charlton Yarnell house in Philadelphia that was, that was stained glass that she, uh, that she contributed to, but there's no, there's no um, stained glass of hers at the, at the main Capitol. Okay, and uh, we have a question here about uh, the conservation. Did you learn anything specific about Violet Oakley's conservation or Violet Oakley's methods during the actual conservation? We learned, um, you know, that the, the conservation was done, as I said, in 91, which was before my time with the committee. But um, some of the, you know, she would mix her own colors. She would apply, there's, there's places where she applied her paints very heavily. 
uh, places where she the canvas you can you can still see the texture of the canvas showing through. So all of the all of the studies and, and works that she or research that she did in in Italy, you know, she tried to, to mirror as, as much as possible uh, frescoes that she saw in in Italy um, in her work. And so she would custom blend and mix her own paints. Um, so there were obviously some things uncovered through that conservation and all of that has been documented in, in reports that we have uh, on file. Um, within those murals, you could see some of the conservation work. There was uh, water damage uh, over time. There was also a period of time where they allowed cigars and cigarette smoking in the building. So you had all of this buildup of grime and dirt uh, on these murals that had to be taken back down to, to expose the colors. Um, so that's some of the some of the interesting, I guess, uh, items that we find when we do, do conservation. Quite a bit about office life has changed over the past 115 True. years. True. <laughs> and uh, we have a question here from a graduate of Villanova University who uh, has never heard of the Red Rose Colony. Um, would you mind uh, talking a little bit more about that? Yeah, the Red Rose, um, let's see, uh, the, the ones that I had mentioned previously, it was uh, the Jesse Wilcox Smith, Elizabeth Shippen Green, uh, Alice Carter actually has a great book called The Red Rose Girls, um, which, which was written about their time spent there um, conducting work, and each of them kind of picked their own, own niches. They all started out as illustrators, uh, some for Harper's Weekly, uh, some for Collier's, uh, and then they all kind of did, did their own thing. Violet really is the only one that moved to, to large scale mural painting. Uh, I think the other, other two, uh, as well as Henrietta Cousins, focused mainly on their illustrations for both children's books and, and periodicals and magazines of the time. But um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a really interesting um, artist, I would say small artist colony between the, the, the actually four women there that, that lived and painted uh, together. And uh, how do you think the, the murals would have been different if they had been completed by one of the other muralists at the Capitol? Well, um, her, her murals, since she, since she came from kind of an illustrating background uh, and illuminated manuscripts, they, they always kind of have that look to them, at least in my opinion, uh, until she gets, well, even, even the later ones do to, to some extent, where Abbey's have more of um oh, an allegorical kind of impressionistic, you know, his, his are much more impressionistic. Oakley's uh, have a different just look to them than I think that they, they would have had had they been uh, completed by Abby. So. And we have a question here about the visitation to the Capitol. Is the governor's reception room typically open to the public? It is. Um, I'm not sure right now how uh, tours we, we were closed. I'm not sure with the governor's new mandate how, how that is, is functioning. Um, but yes, generally, uh, when, when the Capitol building is open, the chamber, uh, the reception room is open. Uh, it's kind of off the normal uh, tour guides uh, path if, if you take a Capitol tour, but you, you can um, access the, the uh, reception room to take a look at the, at the murals. And uh, did Violet Oakley work primarily in large murals? She she never she never stopped working outside of large murals either. She she this was her, you know she did the forty three for this building. Um, she did the Cuyahoga County Courthouse in Cleveland. She did mural painting in uh, Westchester County, New York, and and private homes in Philadelphia. But she also did. Uh, portraiture and she traveled, she, she worked, she lived 87 years, died in 1961, I believe it was, and all, she worked up until, uh, I believe she, she couldn't work anymore, um, just an amazing mm -hmm. body of work. In fact, she has the, uh, at least, I'm not sure if this is true anymore, but when we did research for the book um, in 2001, she had the second largest collection of, of work at the Smithsonian of any American artist, and she's I think she's becoming more well known, uh, aside from being just a regional artist. I'd, I'd like to think that that's the case, but um, she, yeah, she just a vast amount of work that she she did throughout her life, and she never she started running uh, art art studios and art schools during the depression um, to for for fledgling artists and people that still wanted to to do artwork. So just just an amazing amazing artist. It's really extraordinary, and I think we have time for one last question. Uh, what is the most asked question you get from visitors? 
uh, overall or regarding the <laughs> regarding these murals? I think I think it's regarding the governor's reception room murals. Oh, uh, boy, that's that's a tough one. The most asked question. <laughs> I, I don't know that I have an answer to that one. What the what the most <laughs> asked one would would be? Um, we get all kinds of questions, you know, questions about the the carpet and the murals, and um, you know, just all all types of, of questions. Um, but I, I don't know what I would what I would say for the most asked. Uh, we have the link to the Capital Preservation Committee in the chat box. If anyone uh, is interested in. Uh, learning about some of the other uh, other artists at the Capitol, and I would highly recommend if you haven't ever toured the Capitol uh, to add it to your to do list when when everything is reopened. And uh, thank you very much, Jason. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And uh, if there are uh, any artists listening, I wanted to make a special announcement that we are planning to launch the Art of the State entry site on March 15th. Thank you everyone for a great program. Uh, as a reminder, next week we'll be sending the recording out to uh, anybody who is emailed uh, and we'll also put those out on our social media platforms. Uh, and that'll be a great way for you to see those images as well. Um, I did also put in the chat box my email, ctrimble at pa.gov if anybody has any other questions or there's something you might've missed and you wanted to ask, please send those to me. If you're interested in donating to support these programs, I included a link in the chat box to the Pennsylvania Heritage Foundation. Don't forget to sign up for next week's program discuss, uh, discussing um, songbirds with Scott Bills and the next art program that we're gonna be doing next month will be featuring uh, Tina Williams Brewer and Yo Bloodline on April 2nd. Once again, thank you for attending and have a great weekend, everybody.